morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Monday, last Monday of the month. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, we got a great call lined up for you this morning. Wow, look at all the beautiful people. Beautiful Monday morning. We made it through the weekend, and we're off to the last week of the month of September. What an exciting time to be in ACN. Hey, I'd like to first of all say Miss Konohara out there in Japan. I see you on your couch in Japan. Good morning, good morning, Japan. Miss Caroline Baker, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Miss Cillian Woodland, California, thank you. Regional Director, Miss Luana, uh, Luana Pinedo out in Fresno, good morning. Harris Emil, good morning, sir. Miss Anna. Down in uh, Texas, good morning. Oh my goodness, Miss Diane Collins from Australia. Good, good morning, good morning. One of the Shaylas who's gonna throw the bloats in the ocean there. <laughs> Mr. Dale Ranson in Nashville, good morning. Mr. Dave Culver, the professor, good morning, sir. One of my favorite school teachers, Miss Dominic Young up in Nashville, good morning. Kathleen Bryant, good morning. Miss Candy Epperly in Phoenix, good morning. Uh, Miss Kimberly Garcia, good morning. Mr. Payon out in Japan, good morning, sir. Good morning. Regional Director, Miss El uh, Evelyn Phibbs, good morning. Uh, Miss Castro in Phoenix, good morning, young lady. Mr. Freddie Sherman, good morning, good morning, good morning. Mr. Edmund Smith, good morning, good morning, good morning. Mr. Tim Carrad up in Minnesota, good morning. They had a uh, party over the weekend, I had a viewing party for training on Saturday in Minnesota. We had a lot of parties going on, uh, people at their houses and offices showing the opportunity of ACN. So that was one of them. Mr. Sam Foster down in Dallas, Texas. Good morning, sir. Uh, sensational. I see you're still sensational. Sergio in Mexico. Love it. There you are, sir. Thank you. Miss Tamara Mc, uh, McDonald down in San Diego, California. Mr. Ryan Swallow up in Sacramento, California. Let's go over to Ohio where TJ's at. Good morning, young lady. And let's go down to South Carolina, Ms. Dar Darlene Evans, part of crew, also a regional director, just joined us. And I see her husband just joined us. Also, Mr. Curtis Evans, regional director out in South Carolina. Good morning, sir. Ms. Rose Guerrero, another regional director out in Fresno. Good morning. Ms. Pat Robinson over in Oakland, California. I see you there, young lady. Hello, there's that wave. There's the, oh, she's smiling. Okay, good morning, dear. Rick, uh, another regional director, Mr. Richard Singh, just joined us. Good morning, sir. Love it when I see regional directors on here. Miss Melissa Vaughn, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And Mr. Casey Carter, San Diego, where are you, sir? I know you're at your desk, your headphones are on. Let me look and see where he's at. Mr. Ismael, que paso, senor? Good having you on the call this morning. Bueno. Oh, regional director, Mr. Julian Lewis, sir. I'm almost, sir, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. He will be with us tomorrow. That's right. There's Mr. Casey. All right. Well, good morning, all. Good morning. As you know, this is the last week of this month of September. Can you believe October is knocking at the door right here in a couple days? We're talking about, wow. We got uh, Mr. Julian Lewis tomorrow morning. Wednesday, we got a surprise. Thursday, we got Mr. Dean Torelli to kick off September, October 1st, right, Thursday. And then we got Mr. Nelson on Friday. What a lineup this week. Lord have mercy. But today, everybody say today. Wow. Woo! And our contest. Woo! Okay. Anyway, today, 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 this young lady is a dynamo. Oh, gosh, she's amazing. Her and her husband flips gas stations. Yes, they flip gas stations. And you know, a uh, young couple flipping gas stations want to start a family, and that's why they sought out ACN. They said, we can continue flipping gas stations, making great money. However, no time to start a family. We want that. They're a young couple. Uh, she's a great, they're both great community leaders. She's a wife, a mother of two uh, fur babies. <laughs> they're regional directors. <laughs> Give Mrs. Konohara over in Japan laughing at that one. She has one master's degree and one bachelor's degree. In other words, she's got two degrees. That's right. She comes from a long line of entrepreneurs and business owners. Mm -hmm. She owned her first business when she ran out of college at the ripe young age of 26 years old. Think about it, 26. Who's thinking about business? That's why she's a superstar in our business. She's a future SVP slash COC member in our business. Well, without further ado, I'd like to bring up the great Miss Natasha Isbell. Let's give her a hand. Thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And You're welcome, 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 welcome. 
Before I want, before I get started, I just want to thank Mr. Thomas. And I know today is the last Monday. It's very, very bittersweet, but hopefully I deliver a message that hits at least one person on this call today. And before I get started, I want to tell you something about Mr. Thomas. Now, for those of you that know about the contest, don't forget to message Mr. Clemens and I contest to be put into it. But just think about what type of individual Mr. Thomas is. To be a senior vice president at that level, not needing any more finances and wanting to help people that he even has no financial connection to, that's when you know that somebody is walking in their purpose. That's when you know that he's following his calling. And that's exactly what he was put here to do was to be a blessing to all of us so that we can help a lot of other people be a blessing. Now, I can't tell you how much I love and respect Mr. Thomas. Both my husband and I are, I mean, our lives are incomplete without him now. So if ever, Mr. Thomas, you decide to go anywhere, then just let us know and we'll be there. Now, I mean, Mars or Jupiter or something like that. So there's something that, well, for everybody that doesn't know me, my name is Natasha and I'm here in Fresno, California. And when I first saw this business, I was right out of college. I got my bachelor's degree, got my master's degree. And I said, okay, now what next? And I started my own business. I said, look, I know I'm worth more than $15 an hour with a master's degree. So I started my own training business, fitness training business. And what I found out with that was I was always trading time for money. I was always in the studio at random times based on other people's schedules. And if somebody didn't show up, I didn't get paid. And I wasn't okay with that. So when ACN came our way, we jumped in right away because we understood that we have cell phones, internet, we have everything that it offers. So we got very, very lucky and we were going to Las Vegas. And so our regional directors, Mr. and Mrs. King, they said, well, you know, Mr. Thomas lives in Las Vegas. And me being the person that I am, I said, I want to meet him. That's all I said. And he arranged a meeting with our senior vice president, Mr. Al Thomas. And I had no clue who I was going to go meet. And as soon as we walk into the Starbucks, I see this man with really nice glasses, the black and gold ones, okay, black and gold ones. And he's wearing a light pink button up shirt with like half sleeves and shorts and flip flops. And I look and I said, he's our senior vice president. He gets to dress like that. I want to dress like that all the time. We're flip flops, shorts and everything. So we start talking and he asked me a question and he said, Natasha, what are your dreams and goals in life? And I said, well, to make a lot of money. And he said, okay, but what are you going to do with the money? What do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to take care of my family and I want us to experience what life is really about. So I don't want money to be an issue. I want to be able to travel to wherever we want to go. I want to be able to just pack my bags on a weekend and say, hey, we're going out for the weekend or just, just the little things in life. I want to be able to, ladies, go to Target and not worry about how much it's going to cost. Okay. I want to do things like that. And he said, okay, if I said right now, let's go to California. We're in Las Vegas. Let's go to California but you have a choice. Do you want to take a car or do you want to take a jet? And I said, is that a trick question? I want to take the jet. And he said, why do you want to take the jet? Because it'll get me there faster. So he said, just like that, it depends what vehicle you're in. So the fact that you have goals and dreams, you don't have to change those. You just have to change the vehicle that you're in and the jet being ACM, a car being whatever vehicle traditional people are used to, whether it's traditional businesses or whether it's a job or anything like that. And from that day forward, I cannot tell you in the past two years, being an ACN, how much I've grown as a person in every single aspect of my life compared to all the other years that I've been on this earth, okay? So the fact that we get to learn from somebody like Mr. Thomas, I just am forever grateful to him and I really want him to know that. So I hope everybody's ready for today because I'm pretty fired up, especially after last night, the call that we had about the contest I'm just excited. I barely slept. I woke up early this morning, like super early, and that doesn't usually happen for those of you that know me. So today we're going to talk about calling versus comfort. So everybody grab your notebooks, grab your pens, and write down calling versus comfort. Now, does everybody remember puzzles when they were little? 
So I remember being a kid, maybe like eight or 10 years old, and I would go to the store with my mom and I would see a puzzle. And I loved puzzles because I, I just was always that kid that loved challenges. If there was something that I couldn't figure out, you best believe I'm gonna keep trying until I figure it out. So I remember, you know, getting a puzzle and the reason I picked up that puzzle was because it was the most beautiful picture on the cover. And we know that when we buy puzzles, we do that because it's a pretty picture at the end. So I would be really, really excited. I'd go home and, you know, open up the box and I see a bunch of little pieces inside. So I said, mom, it's not already made. What did you buy me, right? This is supposed to come made already. And so she said, no, all the pieces are in there. So every single piece that you're gonna need to complete the picture is already in there. All you have to do is put it together and use the picture as your guide. And I remember I would start on the puzzle and I'd be like, okay, I can do this. And you know, start on the puzzle and piece by piece, I would start putting it together. And then I would find this one piece. So everybody knows what I'm talking about. That one piece that you're, I swear, I swear it fits right here. No, this is where it fits. And you do everything to make that piece fit. But no matter what you do, no matter which way you turn it, I've even thought about cutting pieces up before just to make them fit. Yeah, shit, Sherry knows what I'm talking about. I try to make those pieces fit. But no matter how hard I tried, the piece just wouldn't fit because it wasn't meant to go there. So how many of us in our life try to make a piece fit into your life that doesn't belong there, that doesn't serve you? And you keep doing it and doing it over and over and over and you keep getting the same result and you know that that piece, you know in your heart that that piece doesn't fit there, but you just want to make it fit so bad. Whether it's a job or whether it's some habits that you have, whether it's even somebody in your life, it could be a relationship, or it could be the opinions of others. It's a lid that's been placed on us. And you want to fit in so bad, but you don't understand that that piece doesn't go there. But you keep trying to make it fit. And you know that you're meant for more. You know there's more to it, but no, we're, we're stubborn. We're stubborn, we just want it to fit there. Now, one thing that I wanna tell everyone is you can't fulfill your calling staying in your comfort zone. Meaning you can't, just because you want the puzzle piece to fit doesn't mean it fits. Does that make sense? You can try as much as you want to. You can say, no, 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 but this is me. No, 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 but the, you know, I'm good right here. I'm good right here. But no matter how much you try, you know that there's more, but you're just not going for it because there's something that's holding you back. Now, for those of you, the first week, we remember the teacup. The teacup, it, it turns out to be such a beautiful little teacup, but can you just imagine, it used to be a lump of clay. Then the mason, he would pat it, he would roll it, shape it, put it into the fire, and then come back out, and just when it thought it was done, nope, it goes back into the fire. But the end result is a beautiful picture. Now, for a second, think about the greats. So think about Michael Jordan, think about Oprah, think about Kobe Bryant, think about Michael Jackson. We have The Rock, which is one of my personal favorites. We have Gandhi, we have Martin Luther King. Now think about something that Martin Luther King said. His opening line was, I have a dream. And then he would go on to explain it. But how many of us think we have a dream but in reality, we don't really know what that dream is. And unless you don't figure out what that dream is, you can't get there. That's like trying to hit a target that's not even there. You can't hit a target that's not there. You just can't, no matter how much you try. And think about all of these people, they had to get out of their comfort zone to do something great. Think about for a second, if Michael Jordan just would have said, you know what, uh, I'm okay, I'm okay being third, fourth, or fifth place. Can you imagine how the world would be if we had no Michael Jordan? Now, number two, think about Kobe Bryant. When he passed away, the whole world stopped because the whole world noticed 
that he was gone, even though when he was alive, not everybody felt his presence. But if he would have stayed in his comfort zone, would he have made such an impact on the world that he did? No. Think about Harriet Tubman. We hear Mr. Julian Lewis tell the story so beautifully about Harriet Tubman. And she says, I would have freed more people had they only known they were slaves. But to do that, she had to get out of her comfort zone. She got threats. People were saying, you're going to die. They're going to kill you. They're going to find you. They're going to hang you. All this stuff. But she still decided to go for it. People put their life on the line in order to fulfill their calling versus staying in their comfort zone. Because we can agree the easiest thing is to stay in your comfort zone. Jim Rohn says what's easy to do is also easy not to do. And that's why so many people don't succeed is because they miss doing the little things. When Mr. Greg Provenzano the other day at the International on the call, he said, they asked Kobe Bryant why he is so great. He said, because I don't get bored of the basics. The basics. Can we understand how many times Mr. Thomas had made phone calls? How many times he's had to launch an IBO? How many times he's had to do PBRs? Just think about it. And we know 10,000 hours to master something. He's way past that. But in order to start that, he had to get out of his comfort zone. Nobody comes into this business knowing exactly what to do unless you have a lot of other experience from other places. But even then, it's a totally different concept. It's uncomfortable. It's not something that we're used to, and it's not something that we just come out learning. Not a lot of people know about business. Not a lot of people know how to communicate properly, maintain relationships, do things like that. Everything is uncomfortable, and in order to get to your calling and to fulfill that calling, you have to get out of your comfort zone. All of the people that I named earlier, the thing that they have in common is that they all learned to turn their adversity into their advantage. Write that down. They turn their adversity into their advantage. There's someone, his name is Nick Santanastasso. So if you need the spelling, I'll let you know. But he was born without limbs. He only has one arm. And even on that one arm, he has one finger. And ever since he was little, what his parents did, as soon as he was sitting in a high chair, what they did was they gave him a spoon and they said, figure it out. They said, figure it out. Because Nick, guess what? We're not going to be there your whole life. So you have to learn how to be uncomfortable and learn how to turn your adversity into your advantage. And today, he's one of the biggest speakers around the world. He travels everywhere. He's spoken on stages with Tony Robbins, all because he turned his adversity into his advantage. But how many of us use that adversity as a handcuff? How many of us let our fears become our fence and we just don't go over it? How many of us just stay in that spot even though you know that there's so much more that you could be doing? There's so many things that are amazing about you because like I said earlier, you're one of a kind, you're a limited edition. But if you don't realize that, how is anybody else in the world supposed to know or supposed to realize that? You have to make the first move out of your comfort zone. You have to turn your adversity into your advantage. But what most people today are used to is having everything handed to them. A lot of people, even with whatever's going on, people just want things handed to them. And like Mr. Thomas said, the good old days, right? It's just hard work. You just have to work. But we just want to sit there and have things come to us. We want, you know, prospects flying in. We want IBOs flying in. We want money flying in, all that stuff. But you have to put in the work in the first place to get it. Now, let me tell you another story. So this man one day was sitting in his living room and he thought, you know what? I really, really want some chocolate cake. I know I've been there, right? I just want some chocolate cake. Can somebody just give me some cake? And he just keeps at God, can I have some cake? I want some cake. So what happens is on Monday, he gets flour and he's still telling God, I need cake. I want some cake. Can you hook it up with some cake? On Tuesday, he gets eggs. On Wednesday, he gets sugar. And on Thursday, he gets milk. 
But the man looks up and still says, God, what is this? What's all this stuff? Because I asked you for a cake. And God tells him, look, I can give you all the ingredients. I can give you everything you need. Remember, what you already need is inside the box to complete the picture. But I can't do it for you. I can give you everything. I just got the chills. I can give you everything. Everything you need. You have the flour. You have the eggs. You have the milk. You have the sugar. But it's your job to put it together. You can't expect somebody else to come do it for you. That's like a gym membership. If you hire me as a trainer and you tell, hey, Tasha, can you do these? Uh, no, I'm not doing the push-ups for you. I can give you the plan. I can give you the diet. I can give you the techniques. I can give you everything I have. But if you don't do it yourself, you're not going to get the results. Nobody is going to come hand you a six pack unless it's a six pack of beer or soda. And that's not helping it. You have to do the work. You have to go for it. The bigger the discomfort, the bigger the calling. Understand that. So if there's something that you're going through, just like when I talk about the teacup, if there is a moment in your life that you're going through, there's a phase. You're either going through the padding, the rolling, the fire, or you're coming out getting painted with the fumes, or you're going back into the fire. But you have to withstand all those things if you want that beautiful picture in the end. Because it's not going to come without it. And you got to make moves towards that calling. You got to stop letting your fears become your fence. Stop letting your adversities turn into a handcuff. Turn your adversities into your advantage. What is it about you that's special? Because I guarantee you there's something special about every single one of you on this call. And there's so many of you personally that I know, and I know there's special things about you. But do you know there's special things about you? Because we can tell you all we want as leaders, or even Mr. Thomas, our parents, our family, anybody that loves us, it's easy for people to see the greatness in you, but it's hard to see it within yourself. And that's why we say when you come into this business, borrow the belief of somebody else, of your leader, until you believe in yourself. And you have to know that. You have to understand that. Something that Greg Provenzano said the other day, he said, out of your pain comes your purpose. Out of your pain comes your purpose. And how true is that? There's a lady that I know that used to go through abuse um, when she was married. And what she did after was turn her mess into her message. So she started a shelter for women. Because that's what she went through. She turned her adversity into an advantage. There's something that you've gone through in your life that you can teach other people how to avoid or you can help other people get through. But if you stay in your comfort zone, you can't get to your calling. There's people right now out there waiting for you to call them. They don't even know you yet. They're waiting for that text message from you. They're waiting for you to find them. They don't even know it. We don't know it. They don't know it. But we know that there's somebody out there that needs to hear from you. And it has to be from you. It can't be from anybody else because you have something that they need. Out of devastation comes direction. When you are completely devastated, you will find direction. And how many times do we know that? How many stories when people are just way at the bottom, that's when they find something and they say, this is it. This is what I have to do. This is what I was called to do. But we can't, you can't progress without the pain. The pain is a part of it. We know that really old thing, no pain, no gain, right? But without the pain, you can't get to your purpose. And that's staying in your comfort zone. We try to make that puzzle piece fit so much, but it's not going to fit. It's not meant to be there. You're not meant to fit there. It, we don't fit there. We're not normal. If we're doing this business, we're not, we don't think like 95% of the population thinks. We think like the three to 5%. We're using leverage and residual income. You're different. Just accept it. You're meant to fit somewhere else. And until you don't find that place, until you don't find that calling or that purpose or that adversity into your advantage, you're going to be in the wrong place. You fit with the eagles. You don't fit with the chickens. You have everything that you need. 
You have everything, but nobody can do it for you. Think about a rubber band. In order to fulfill its calling, it has to stretch. It has to be stretched in order to tie around things and keep things together, which is what it's meant to do. But if it doesn't stretch, it's not gonna fulfill its purpose. And once a rubber band is stretched, we know it never goes back to the size that it originally was, which is what is happening to your mind here in this opportunity. You're gonna be stretched. You're gonna be asked to do a lot of things that are gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna be asked to do a lot of things that are new. Some things you might not even understand. Some things you might see as a fear turning into a fence for you. But you have to understand that the people that are here to guide you are here to help you. Like Mr. Thomas says, a wealthy person has, n has no reason to hurt you. It's the broke people that are gonna try to keep talking to you saying, no, 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 the puzzle piece, you fit here. Right here, this little, right here, make it fit. Cut it, do whatever you need to do, make it fit. Make it fit. But you know you're not meant to fit there. That's not what you're here to do. You have a calling, you have a purpose. But if you don't go out and do the work, if we don't go out there getting out of our comfort zone, we can't fulfill our calling. We just can't. Think about all the great people you know. The story of David and Goliath the other day from, Mike, from Patrick Mazur. How many of us heard that story and we were just like, oh my God, he's right. He's right. That's me. That's like me. But in order to even win, David had to get out of his comfort zone. You had thousands of people that were running away and he's the last one standing saying, I'm going to do it. So are you going to do it? Because we know September's already over. There's only 95 days left in this year. And just like that, 2020 is gone. For most people, we didn't even get to experience the life of 2020. We did, but in a totally different way. And that's our adversity for this year, which we need to take and turn into our advantage. And it's going to be painful. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to make phone calls that you don't want to make. You're going to have to do things that you don't want to do. But in order to get what you want to get, you have to do things that other people aren't willing to do. In order to have something that 95% of the people don't have and what the 5% have, they were willing to do what the 95% weren't, which is things like this, which is ACN. So are you willing to do something different to get something different? Are you willing to turn your pain into your purpose? Are you willing to turn your adversity into your advantage? Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone in order to fulfill your calling that you have on your life? You want to leave this earth with remember whens versus what ifs. Write that down. Remember whens versus what ifs. You get to the end of your life and do you want to say, do you remember when I did that? Do you remember when I hit regional director? Remember when I hit regional vice president? And remember when I hit senior vice president and everybody that thought I wasn't going to make it was there. Everybody watched me walk the stage. My family was there to watch me. Everyone was there cheering me on. They were a part of my parade, my SVP parade. Or do you want to say, right there when you're about to pass away the last 30 seconds i wish i would have gone for it you get to decide what happens from this moment forward and that hit somebody because i got the chills again if you know that this is your time go out and make it happen miss williams you can do this miss robinson you can do this miss vaughn you can do this miss brewer mr clemens mr culver miss collins mr carter Ms. Castro, Mr. Ransom, Ms. Sherian, Ms. Marcia, Mr. Ryan, Ms. Anna, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Julian, Ms. Celia, Mr. Sergio, Mr. Luisen, Ms. Luann, Ms. Akiko, Ms. Caroline, Mr. Freddie, Ms. Belinda, Mr. Tim, Mr. Thomas, you already did it. Mr. Willie, Mr. Winston, Mr. Marvin Carter, Brian Baker, Ms. Tamara, Mr. Edmund, Ms. Zoe, everybody can do it. You just have to wanna do it. It's your time. Why, why do we keep wasting time? There's a lot of people that are not gonna make it to 2021. 
there's a lot of people that didn't even make it to today. But you're here. And we know if you're not dead, you're not done. You're not done. Miss Williams is laughing. You're not done. You are not done. You too, Mr. Willie. You got it too. You're not done. Go out there and make it happen. Even if you move slow, move slow. But just know that momentum comes out of one little burst of effort. This next 30 days can set you up for the next 30 years if you do it correctly. But if you miss this opportunity, like I heard from another SVP, if you miss this chance, you're committing financial suicide. You're going on top of the bridge, throwing all your money off the bridge. That's what's happening. Financial suicide. Now is the time where you step out of your comfort zone and into your calling. Now is the time to take your adversity and turn it into your advantage. Now is the time to take your pain and turn it into your purpose because you're still here. You still have something that the universe wants done. You just have to figure it out. You have all the pieces to the puzzle. You deserve this. Your family deserves this. Your kids, your relatives, your community deserves to see you win. But it's not going to happen unless you do the work because nobody else can come do it for you. Remember who you are, where you came from, and where you're going. Don't let the opinions of other people turn into shackles for yourself. Do not give people control over your life. This is your life. You have a calling to fulfill, and you better go fulfill it. Remember, you're a limited edition. Get it done. With that, Mr. Thomas, I want to thank you so much, and I'll hand the call back over to you. Limit addition, everybody. Limit addition. Limit get Can we give the, 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 the queen her, her – look at this. Limit addition. Limit addition. This is limited, too. Limit addition. I love what Richard uh, saying. regional director said, time to take action. He's so true in that. Limit addition. You can't fulfill your calling, stand in your comfort zone. Did you guys hear what she said there? I'll say it again. You can't fulfill your calling by staying in your comfort zone. Matter of fact, you can't get even customer qualified being in a comfort zone. That's powerful. And I like the idea with Nick. That, that's amazing. You just blessed me with that because I remember that. You know what? And I love it. I was talking to a, a couple IBOs this morning. I'm not going to say their names because I'm not putting it on the spot. But I told them to go figure it out. I, as a Zach, go figure it out. And that's what leaders do. They figure it out. Wow. Thank you so much. That, uh, whew. and I love the idea what you said. You have something that people need. Folks, they're only going to get it from you, but you got to be in that position to witness to them about the ACN opportunity. Wow. Can we show Miss Ismail some love? Come on. Her husband jumped on. Thumbs up. Look, give her some love, everybody. Give her some love. Give her some love. Come on. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. She did a wonderful job, Mr. Clemens. Wouldn't you agree? A wonderful job. Right, Mr. D uh, Ryan Swallow? Wonderful. Look, gave her hearts. Look at that. Wonderful job. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Hey, I, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because you touched so many people with that today, Ms. Ismail. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Woo! It's Monday. It's the last Monday of the month. Isn't it, isn't it your time? Tomorrow morning, we got the great Mr. Julian Lewis. Wednesday, I can't tell you. Thursday, Mr. Dean Terrell will be with us. And Friday, the Mr. Nelson will be with us. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we have Power Hour. Remember the contest. Wink, wink. Those that know, know about the contest. Some of you go, what, 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 what contest? Hey, that's what, that's what happened. We done on here. Anyway, tonight at 6 o'clock, Power Hour. And that's going to give you a jump on everybody else for the month of October. You know what I mean, contest people. Wink, wink, wink. Anyway, I want to thank everybody that signed up my voice. It's Monday. It's time to follow up with 